It's Storm Room Sports Chat. I'm your host, Emmy Comia, with analyst Evan Murray, UATV Sports Director Joey Petrello, and analyst Salva Carmona. Storm Room Sports Chat starts right now. Welcome to another episode of Dorm Room Sports Chat. I'm your host, Emi Comia, and I'm joined tonight by our three analysts, Salva Carmona and Joey Petrello, and we also have a guest analyst, Danny Passavoy, filling in for Evan Murray. He's a UATV sports reporter. Tonight we discuss Arizona football's big win over Washington and give our thoughts on the red versus blue game, as, long, as well as give you a Wildcat sports report, along with an NFL West Coast score rundown. Finally, we'll finish off with 30 seconds. On Saturday, the Arizona football team treated their fans to a 52-17 win over Washington on a family weekend. Danny, the defense was better than ever last night. Elabor elaborate for me on what they did well. Well, they did a few things extremely well that they haven't done all season. Starting off with the secondary. Now, Derek Rainey got the start over Shaquille Richardson in this game. Shaq has not performed this season like all Wildcat fans thought he would. And I think starting Derek Rainey, but still giving Shaq some playing time, was kind of, a, kind of a kick in the butt and got him going. Another key to this game was the pressure on Keith Price. Arizona's been, basically they've failed so far getting pressure on opposing quarterbacks. This year, or this week rather, they sacked, uh, sacked Price four times, also caused him to scramble and throw the ball away over six times this game. I think that was the main key, and I think that's why we're able to hold Washington to zero points in the second half. Yeah, there's no question at all that putting the pressure on Keith Price was a huge part of the reason that the defense did so well. As you said, he was pick, picked off twice, uh, sacked four times. We saw Taimi Tutogi getting in there and sacking him. Taimi Tutogi is a fullback, and that's just incredible that he's been playing that's defense right. the way that he has been and just... Keith Price as, is a guy that when you put the pressure on him, he is going to make a lot of mistakes. Last year against Arizona, he was picked off three times. This year twice, as Danny said. So, yeah, it's all about the pressure. They've got to keep doing that. If they expect to do anything against Matt Barkley next week against USC, they're going to have to put the pressure on him as well. Yeah, I totally agree with all, <clears throat> all that, all, everything that Joey just said. And I believe that uh, – I, I believe – I'm pretty sure it's the first shout-out we never had a shout-out quarter in the whole season, even less... Uh, Besides South Carolina yeah. State. That's right. I mean, yeah, I mean, in conference play. Uh, so it was great. We had a whole half that we shut him down, and I think uh, defense was phenomenal, like Joey uh, said. With that, Salva, last week Arizona had a bye week. This gave them extra time to prepare for the Huskies. How beneficial do you think the bye week was for the Cats? And do you think they would have done as well without it? I do not know if they would have done as well without it, uh, but I'm pretty sure it definitely helped, uh, it, it, especially in defense. We had a lot of our offensive and defensive line beat up from the couple of weeks ago, a few injured players. So there's no reason to believe that it didn't help. Uh, it didn't help the team, and also we were great in the red zone, whereas in the other games we weren't. So I believe the the bye week has a lot to do with it. I agree with you there. I think the bye week had a lot to do with uh, the reason that it was a blowout. I think that Arizona still could have won even if there was no bye week, but that's it right. surely wouldn't have been 52 to 17. I agree. Yeah. And that's just crazy to think that because Washington took down Stanford before, and, and you know, as you saw earlier in the season, Arizona wasn't able to do that. But yeah, the bye week I think definitely benefited them, and I, I think they were prepared for every aspect of yeah. Washington's game. They were able to pick apart uh, the passing game. They were able to have success on offense. Uh, special teams mm -hmm. looked good as well. Richard Morrison had that 63-yard punt return for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. I just feel like they were very prepared, and, and a lot of it is credited to the bye week. I, th I think a good portion of that, too, can be attested to the conditioning that you get between, the, between mm -hmm. bye weeks. Mm -hmm. Arizona, like Rich Ross said in the press conference after the game, they're not going to overpower players. They are not the biggest team in the Pac-12, mm -hmm. and they cannot compete that way. They have to run by people, yeah. and they have to be ready that way. They have to be more conditioned. Giving a bye week to a team like Arizona, 
they will be conditioned, conditioned, they will be ready for the next game. I think that was a big part of it too. And they also had a chance to heal up some of those injuries. No. I mean, we didn't see Tevis really that much. I think he tried to play. He was suited up, but we didn't see too much of him. But still, some other guys were banged up. And, uh, and you know, it's football, so the whole team is banged up. And any time you get a chance to rest the yeah. whole team for a week, it's going to pay off. So yeah. I think that also yeah. was a big-time benefit that the bye week provided. And going on that, I, I agree with everything you just said. But I also like to point out that not just physically but mentally it was a good break for the U of A going on a three on a three losing three game losing streak. Yeah, it was kind of like a, yeah, a deep breath. So for them, let's, if you will. yeah, take a break and let's start over. And I believe I would still believe we will make it to a bowl game. Mm -hmm. Shall we? Several Wildcat alum were spotted at the game in, in last in last night at last night's games. Starting QB Nick Foles was there. Which which leaving player from last year's squad did the Arizona football miss the most? Well, you know, I, I think that Arizona definitely misses guys like Jerron Kreiner, Nick Foles, David Douglas. Uh, Gino Crump, David Douglas. Those are all great guys, but I think that the Wildcats are set on quarterback right now, and they're set at receiver. So I think a guy that the Wildcats miss the most is Paul Vasallo, just because they're so thin at linebacker. Marquise Flowers has done a great job uh, making that switch from safety to linebacker, but still... Uh, as we were talking about earlier, Arizona has had trouble putting pressure on, on the quarterback, and Paul Vasallo was a guy that was pretty good at that, and he also was a great tackler, which uh, Arizona has struggled with at times as well. So I think just that inside linebacker position, Arizona is, was really missing Paul Vasallo this year. Uh, I think I agree with you. I think mm -hmm. Paul Vasallo was huge for the linebacker mm -hmm. position. However, now this year, we have Sir Thomas Jackson coming in at linebacker. Marquise Flowers playing pretty well this year. I think what we're really missing, not that Dan Buckner can't be a number one receiver. He right. is. He's huge. Mm -hmm. He can make the plays downfield. But Jerron Kreiner just had that presence. Oh, no and, doubt. And he was going to blow by you, and he can overpower you at the line, throw you down, and he will make that play. He's a sharp mm -hmm. receiver who, had, who can run routes in the blink of an eye. I would say that besides the secondary players – uh, Jerron Kreiner is definitely one of yeah. the top guys that they miss as well. But, yeah, I just think at, from, from what I've seen this season, the offense is great, and I think that so, the, the Wildcats sent a good number of players from their defense to the NFL, and if they were still on the team this year, uh, then I think they would be a, a very good defense. Paul Vasallo didn't go to the NFL, but I think the weakest yeah. part of the defense is, like, that the yeah. defensive line, middle linebacker kind of position. Yeah. So I think just that that's why I say that Paul Vassallo is the most missed. But they definitely do miss Kreiner as well. He oh, was yeah. he was incredible. Also with Derek Gerald, he was a huge part of that line. Mm -hmm. um, by going on that, it's amazing that we are not saying that we miss Nick Foles just because Matt Scott has done such a great job. But I mean, right. we're, not, we're really not missing the best player of the team of last year. So that shows how we've improved so much in the quarterback position to the point that we don't miss the best player of our team last year. I've seen times in the season where Arizona has missed Nick Foles. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, well, but yeah. overall, yeah. It's to Nick Foles is not one of the most missed players this season for the no. Wildcats. That's right. Because Matt Scott has done a phenomenal job. But, on, but with that, there are some times when, you know, I, especially in the final minutes of games, yeah, where yeah. I wish that Nick Foles yeah. was still our quarterback. His but still, yeah. Matt Scott has just done a... a an A, an A plus effort and job this season for Arizona. All right, analysts. Um, the Wildcats are now one and three in the Pac-12. We have Matt Barkley coming to Tucson this weekend. How important is it for us to come out against USC on Saturday? Well, uh, uh, this is going to be the most difficult test besides maybe Oregon for the Wildcats. Oregon on the road, I, I feel like, is the most difficult test that they've had. But USC. Is just incredible. Matt Barkley had a great game last week. I know it wasn't against the strongest team, but still I feel like he's separated himself above a lot of other people now in the Heisman race. Maybe he's the leader now, especially since, you know, Geno Smith hasn't been performing as well as he has in the past. But, you know, it's going to be important. I, I think that the Wildcats could win this game, but I'm not going to say that they will. I think that Arizona is going to lose, but it's going to be a, a round – 42-28 USC. I uh, see, I, I actually have Arizona winning this game, and I have Arizona really? winning this game for a few different reasons. Uh, USC's defensive line, really their defense in total, is not what it has been in the last few years. Mm -hmm. And everyone can see that. They've shown that they are vulnerable. 
Matt Barkley is not playing how he's played and how he's supposed to be. He's not the Heisman front runner. He's making some bad throws. He's got a bunch of interceptions on this year. However, Silas Red, right. one of the best running backs Arizona will face, and Arizona's 11th in the Pac-12 against the run. Uh, Marquise Lee, Robert Woods, probably the two best wide receivers Arizona will face against a pretty run-down secondary. It's going to kind of be if the Arizona secondary can keep up with the wide receivers, I think that they have a pretty good chance of winning this game. I think Arizona's offense is much better than USC's defense, and I think it's going to be a shootout. And Barkley is vulnerable, but also he had a, a tremendous amount of success against Arizona last season. Yeah. I know that was against, uh, I know that was at home for him, but still, what I saw from Barkley last season against the Wildcats, he was just phenomenal. I'm not, like, like you said, he hasn't been as great, uh, but I'm also wondering who's your pick for the Heisman? If um, not Barkley right now. Right so now. Oregon has like two or three of them. Yeah. Actually. Oregon? Yeah, yeah. Actually, You think so? Yeah, I do. I might be the only guy in the world that thinks that, but I do think that Oregon could have, has a huge shot at going undefeated. I, th I mean, honestly, last week I was looking at Oregon's schedule and I'm like, this week might get an upset at ASU. And <laughs> I mean, they ran over them. But that's Oregon as a team. I think Oregon's winning is just is much more of a team effort than an individual. And the Heisman is is the guy that stands out the most. And on the Oregon, is, they have multiple guys that are standing. The thing out is, the USC most. will have to face Oregon twice if they yeah. if they run it. I I do not see them winning one of them, any of them, any of the two games. So the pro, what I think is they will not give the Heisman to a guy that loses three games. Stanford and two against Oregon. My Heisman pick, Colin Klein. Kansas State right now, 7-0. and They just took over that's the true. number two spot in that's the a, BCS. That's not a bad pick. He's that's been pick. unbelievable. He's one of the best running quarterbacks in college football, and he can throw. I, I think he is unbelievable. Uh, right now, I have him at number one. I agree. I agree with the fact that Kansas State's a great team. I think it's the best team that no one's talking about, uh, mm -hmm. and I think that is a really good pick. I just feel that if Oregon goes undefeated, the Heisman might end up in... D'Anthony Thomas? Yeah. All right, thanks guys. When DRSC returns, we'll have a quick rundown of what the red and blue game came out to be. Thanks, don't change the channel. I'm Derek Williams, the former U of A Wildcat. You're watching UA TV. Don't change the channel. of this season's drum major. For an entire week, there's golfing, food, drinks, and entertainment that doesn't stop when the sun goes down. If you are not yet registered to vote, here's what an Arizona voter registration form looks like. Bundle of Wildcats Winter is almost here. Reporting from the UA Mall for Wildcats, I'm Shay Sorensen. Arizona basketball's annual red and blue game. Behind Kevin Parham's 17 points, the red team prevailed 62-58. Salva, explain what both teams did well and what can they do better in the coming season? Well, I believe that they had a really uh, interesting game uh, with the 1988 uh, guys over there. By the way, the posters were really cool. I don't know if you guys got some, but they were really nice, the 1988 posters. But going back to the... I didn't uh, get one. I, yeah, have, I, I didn't get one either. I have like 10, 20 at my house. Just, <laughs> uh, well, bring you're giving me one. <laughs> yeah, bring one by. Uh, but going back into the, into the game, I think a uh, really new atmosphere... Uh, it, Impossible to compare it to the Red Blue game of last year because we have six new players, uh, including walk-ons. Um, so things that they did well. I mean, I was impressed impressed with the dunk contest. There's some dunks there were really uh, cool. I mean, even though I mean it doesn't define the team, but I th I honestly think it's, it'll be hard to uh, to assess how the team is until they play a couple of good games against real teams, not against each other. Well, something that I thought was interesting that will play a factor in this season is free throw shooting. 
It, you can live and die by the free throw shot. And the blue team yesterday shot 71.4% from the free throw line. That's got to go up. However, the red did shoot 88.9%. Uh, 88 but in the second half, they shot just over 66.7, I think maybe was the number. In the second half, you have to increase that. The most important time for your free throws are in the second half because that's when the end of the game is. That's when the final points are scored. So I think that they have to improve on that aspect. Other than that, I thought they played some pretty good defense on both sides. Uh, the blue team looked pretty dead there for a little bit. They were down by as much as, uh, much as 12 points, but they were able to uh, bring it up to all the way to two, eventually lost to, by four. But still, I think that uh, there's a lot of good things to take away from the red versus blue game. And the one thing that they definitely need to improve on, though, as I was saying, is that free throw shooting percentage. What was a little bit disheartening for me was the fact that just like last year, both teams came out very sluggish. They shot, mm -hmm. both teams shot yeah. under 40% from the field in the first half. Last year, if you remember, Arizona's team just would not come out strong. Right. And yeah. no matter how many new players we have, it was basically the same exact story. That's true. They, they shot over 58% in the second half. However, if Arizona wants to win this year with the players they have right now, they got to come out of the mm -hmm. come out of the gates firing. They did. Yeah. They, they were very cold. That's out right. Of the gates. Yeah, last year they lost a lot of games because of their attitude, not because of their talent. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I think the attitude was good this year, though. I saw good chemistry between a lot of those players, particularly Mark Lyons, Grant Jarrett, and, um, yeah, so those two players were, were mixing well together very well. So, yeah, I think the chemistry is not that bad this year. It's pretty good. The Bahamas trip is going to help with that, too. So, yeah. you know, I'm not worried about the chemistry too much. All right, Joey, we got to see some of Arizona's new players in action for the first time. Which new Wildcats stood out to you the most? I think definitely it was Grant Jarrett. He had 14 points, 4 assists, and 8 rebounds. What a debut. He also played 25 minutes in the game, and that was... That was uh, he was tied for or tied for second most minutes in the game out of the rest of the guys on the red team with him. So I think that Grant Jarrett is the standout guy. I expected more from Gabe York. He had a fantastic dunk competition. I was pretty impressed. He was jumping over guys like Angelo Troll and stuff to Duncan, and that was really impressive. But he was one for six from the field. Only hit one three point shot in the second half. So. Gabe York's got to do a little bit better. I was also really impressed with Mark Lyons. He did a good job running the floor, so I'm not worried about him. But I think that the number one player that's new, that played the best in that game, was Grant Jarrett. Uh, mine is Mark Lyons. Now, Arizona last year was turnover happy, and that mm. killed us. Mark Lyons, two turnovers in 25 minutes of play. He's a great ball handler. He could get to the hoop. It looks like we finally have a good starting point guard who will hold on to the ball, and Arizona really needs that. Which is something we had trouble with last season. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. I think he's the best point guard we've ever had since Nick Wise left. So I do I totally agree with uh, what you just said, and I think Mark Lyons was the best player uh, of the new guys. So, and yeah. Momo Jones did a good job at point guard a couple years ago before he left or whatever, but they clearly yeah. missed him last year. Now you bring in a guy like Mark Lyons who's better than Momo Jones, and the, the sky is the limit right now at point guard for the Wildcats. Okay, Danny, Arizona basketball is going into the season ranked 11th in the nation. Are they as good as their ranking? Uh, you know, I think, I think it's a little bit high. However, they should be in the top 20. They do have the talent right now. Mm. Uh, Mark Lyons, they finally have a good point guard. Nick Johnson, expect him to break out this year. Took over 20,000 shots in the offseason, really working on his jumper. Le leading scorer in the game, right, with he 20, 20 points. points last night, yep. You still have Solomon Hill, who can do it all. Uh, and the young guys, Grant Jarrett, Gabe York, uh, Caleb, all these guys who are coming mm -hmm. in who are some of the best young talent in college basketball. I see them going to the, at least a Sweet 16. Yeah. They're still a pretty young team, but with Mark Lyons, Nick Johnson much improved, Kevin Parham, without all the distractions that he had last year playing at the top of his game, this will be a very good and very tough Arizona Wildcat basketball team. Yeah, I totally agree. I think Sweet 16 is what I would predict as of now. In fact, rank number 11th equals Sweet 16. So mm -hmm. we'll see if they improve that. I really hope they do. It's my last year here. So hopefully we'll make it to the Final Four. 
Yeah, and another thing that's an addition to this season, he's not a new player by any means, but he wasn't around for much last year. Kevin Parham, yeah. 17 points last night. He looked great. He looked right. like a leader out there. He was running the floor. He was aggressive. He was doing he was doing very well. And like you said, Mark Lyons now. Nick Johnson, I expect a breakout season for him too. So yeah, I think I think they number eleven is not a bad pick for them. I mean could be worse. So last year it was number 16, right, I believe right. they came into this season. And I think that this year they have a much better overall team than they did last year. So I would say rank yeah. them higher than 16. Yeah. Maybe not as high of 11, as 11th, but definitely, like you said, a top 20 team, no doubt. I, 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 going, going back to, the, to what you just said, I would say they're just as, good as, a, as, a, as a, just as good of a team as they were last year coming in, just bigger. So if everything stays the way it's supposed to be and with a better chemistry and better t uh, team like uh, ball handling and defense, free throw percentage, I think we could definitely be better than last year. Mm -hmm. All right, stay tuned for the Wildcat Sports Report and the NFL West Coast Rundown after this commercial break. I'll be right there. Thanks, cameraman. You're my hero. Welcome back, Arizona fans. We now give you the Wildcat Sports Report. Arizona football punt returner Richard Morrison was named Pac-12 Special Teams Player of the Week. On Saturday, he took a punt return 63 yards to Pander. When the Cats, when the cats travel to UCLA, kickoff time has officially been moved set for 7.30 p.m. The number 17 Arizona Wildcats hockey team was swept by number one Ohio on the road over the weekend. The team will play their first home game of the season against number 23 Eastern Michigan. That will be on Saturday night at the Tucson Convention Center and the puck will drop at 7.30 p.m. Arizona softball will wel welcome the National Pro Pitch All-Stars as part of the NPF All-Stars Back to School Tour on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Now for the NFL West Coast Rundown. Yesterday, the Arizona Cardinals dropped their third straight game after losing to the Minnesota Vikings on the road 21-14. The Oakland Raiders defeated the Jacksonville Jaguars 26-23 at home, and the San Francisco 49ers overcame the Seattle Seahawks 16-13 at home. The San Diego Chargers had their bye week. Analysts, I noted that the Cardinals are now a three-game losing streak. Can they rebound? Well, the question is, what does rebound mean? Does a rebound mean, are they going to make it to the playoffs? I doubt it. I think they have a shot. I know Evan was here a couple weeks ago, and she was saying how they were definitely going to make it to the playoffs and win a couple of games. Uh-uh. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I told her then. I told her now. If you're watching, think about me as you're watching this. Uh, uh, so I do, believe, I do believe that they have a chance of making, up, making it to the playoffs, but I think they were overhyped when they were 4-0. I do, I, I do also think that not, they're not as bad as people are saying they are as of now. Uh, I... And completely off the Cardinals bandwagon. They started off the year extremely hot. John Skelton is not a quarterback who could take this team That's to right. the playoffs. Yeah. They're in a division right now with the Seahawks who are playing extremely well. They're in a division with the San Francisco 49ers who are probably one of the top three teams in the, in, in the NFC in total. I don't see them competing with either of these teams. Uh, the running back game not that great right now. I know Steven Telling had over 100 yards on this game, but their offensive line is just atrocious. Yeah. They've let up 
uh, one of the, like, I think the most sacks in the NFL to this date. I just don't see them going anywhere with the schedule they have ahead of them. And like you said, not a great running game, not a great passing game either. And it's because mainly, I think, of that offensive line. It's just almost sad to watch the Arizona Cardinals play football, especially their <laughs> quarterbacks, because in, especially that game against the St. Louis Rams, Cobb's helmet was knocked off That's right. like three times. He was on the ground just sulking, probably thinking, oh, man, like I'm going to be feeling all this tomorrow morning. Like Just taking shots from players left and right. I mean, there's almost never a time when an Arizona Cardinals player or a quarterback makes a throw and doesn't get drilled. The offensive line, you got to step up. Your job is to protect the quarterback, and you're not doing that right now. You're not opening holes for the, off, or for the running backs either, and your schedule doesn't get any easier, uh, Cardinals fans, because you're going to be uh, against San Francisco next week, at Green Bay, at Atlanta, against St. Louis again at home, which is not a difficult team to beat, but you did lose 17-3 to them in week five, and that was the game I was talking about where Cobb was getting hit left and right. 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 Then they go to New York to play the Jets, who I don't think they could beat. Then they play Seattle, who they did beat earlier in the season, but Seattle has a very good defense. That They've improved a lot. They, they have improved since the beginning of the season, I think. Then they're going to play Detroit at home, then Chicago at home, then at San Francisco. Those games are just all very losable for the Cardinals, so... They could. This could be a situation where the Cardinals start off four and zero and then end four and twelve on a nine-game losing streak, or yeah, on a yeah, on a big losing streak, and it's just it doesn't look good for them at this point. Yeah. What they do have going for them though is they do have an above-average defense. Clayus Campbell, Darnell Dockett, Patrick Peterson, probably one of the best corners, mm -hmm. if not the best corner in football right now. But unlike like the Steelers, unlike the Ravens. Their defense cannot win the game for them. Yeah. They need that offense. I agree with that. But I also have to say, the NFL, and we all know this, it's a quarterback league. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're better off having a star quarterback and no backup than having two average quarterbacks, and that's what the Cardinals have right now, I do not think any of those two quarterbacks can lead them onto the playoffs. And I think that will be, at the end of the road, it will be the worst thing is the quarterback position and the lack of deep, like they're not deep in it. And touching up on what Danny said about the defense, they have a solid defense, but your offense uh, has to keep the defense off the field to get some rest. You know, if your offense is, if your defense is on the field the entire game, they're going to be gassed and they're going to be scored on. So the defense can only hang for so long and if the offense isn't producing anything. Unlike most people, I've always been the type of person to say, Defense keeps you in games, but offense wins games. That's right. Mm. And if you don't have the offense, you're not going to win games. And I'm mm. sorry, the Arizona Cardinals right now, they don't have the manpower to keep them in this playoff race. Mm. All right, we're going to take another quick commercial break. When we return, we'll finish off the show with a game of 30 seconds. Don't change the channel. David Hasselhoff, the Hoff, get Hoff with UATV. Stay tuned, don't change the dial. Hey guys, welcome back. It's that time, everyone. Danny, you're up first for your 30 seconds. All right, tonight I'm going to talk about why the Seattle Seahawks will win the NFC West. Now, a lot of people are picking San Francisco, especially after their loss this weekend, but here's why. The running game, Marshawn Lynch bruising back, wears down defensive lines, open up, opens up the air game for Russell Wilson. But mostly it's the defense, Chris Clemens. 
uh, Mabane, Lynch on that defensive line, one of the best sacking core in the NFL. Richard Sherman, one of the best corners in the NFL. They have what it takes to beat San Francisco. Salva, you have 30 seconds, starting now. So I'll talk about Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong, has, uh, we all know by now, has been stripped of, of all his records for seven seasons, so he is, has no longer, uh, he has never won the officially the seven tour de France that he did win. Uh, the big, uh, one of the bigger failures, I guess, on sports, especially since Nike, Nike pulled the plug. After that, Oakley, Budweiser, and all the sponsors back down. I do believe that he did beat cancer legitimately. I also think that he did not win those two defenses legitimately. All right, Joey, we're going to wrap it up with you. Your 30 seconds starts now. Okay, and I know this is the West Coast, but guys, Arizona Wildcat Hockey is a very exciting event to go to. Next Saturday, we open up against Eastern Michigan. Arizona Hockey has the number 17th ranked team in the ACHA. Come out, support your Wildcats. I am the voice, the play-by-play -play for the team. It's going to be a lot of fun if you want to check out the interview with Coach Hogan and I, uh, we did that uh, episode one, and it's on YouTube, so check that out. It's going to be a really fun season, so come out to as many games as you can. If you're 21 or older, you can drink, so also that. <laughs> All right, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Dorm Room Sports Chat. We'll be back next week, so don't miss out.